Okay, welcome back. And in this video uh, concerning the uh, power pod for the FT Flyer airplane, uh, we're going to bend the landing gear. <clears throat> now, this landing gear on number two here is three thirty seconds wire. Okay, and it comes in a big long thirty six inch piece. I've already cut one in half, and um, I'm going to use uh, something called. Uh, Harry Higley and Sons Wirebender. There it is, Wirebender. Harry Higley and Sons. It's nothing more than a, a block like this, a hardened steel block. Uh, they come in various sizes depending upon the wire that you use. And the wire that you use for this one is, there's, I got, this, there's a set of them, all different sizes. There's four of them. Okay, and I got the appropriate size for this wire, 330 seconds, right here. Okay, and it's a good way to bend wire. Uh, it probably beats doing it by uh, hand with two pair of pliers, um, uh, which does get old when you bend more than just a couple of once or twice. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to start with an 18 inch wire and bend it. Um, Till it's about, uh, uh, well, you can see how far it's been. It's probably somewhere between 45 and 60 degrees. Uh, this one was probably bent too much. I'm going to bend it a little less than that. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the first bend, here's, it's sitting on a, on a bench vise. The block is there. It's down nice and tight. <clears throat> and I'm just going to do it by hand. So basically you have to um, push the wire around and then maybe push it up into the wire bender a little bit so that the center of the wire stays the, where I marked it, stays at the um, right where the bend is forming. Okay. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay, so uh, that's the bend. That's probably, I don't know what the degree angle is, but that looks about right. It's slightly, um, okay, that's the first bend right here. Uh, not the bend for the uh, gear. Let me match this up, okay. So um, you want it to be, um, far enough and sharp enough so actually this I did this bend with the first bend this one with a pair of pliers and this looks a lot straighter and better so so you can see how that compares to the the one underneath it okay that's a pretty good angle right there okay <clears throat> so next we're gonna measure two inches from the V so we're going to measure down two inches from the V on both sides and mark here. Okay, that's a good measurement. Now two inches from the V there, it'll be right there. Okay. And you want to get that fairly accurate. That looks good. That looks good. And just by line of sight, line it up like this, they look straight across. Okay. So now, <clears throat> so now we're going to form the bend, as you can see, in this direction, out and up. Okay. So that that what that means is we're going to put this in the in the vise here like this with this part 90 degrees and I'll bend in that direction. Try to hold this straight up and down. So that's about 90 degrees. So you can see that's bending straight out from the uh, 90 degree mark, or straight 90 degree there. 
Now you got to do this one the same way, and you can use the the bender here in any direction. So now what I want to do is uh, let's see. I did that one that way, so I got to do this one just like that. Let me find my mark. I'm going to transfer the mark further around the, like that, okay? I can see the mark. <clears throat> so now, um, uh, if I bend this way, then Yep, so that needs to go that way, all right? You gotta make sure you're going in the right direction. I'm gonna have to move the little piece out to the edge of the because it's, it's hitting the, the bottom pieces interfering with the bend here. All right, now that's better. So there we go, two two bends outward. Okay. Now, um, if you can see how this works, that's going to sit there like that and be held by the rubber bands. Okay. And now I need these to be out, towed out a little bit, like like that. Okay. So now they're towed out. Okay. Now the last bend here is where the axle is going to be. Okay, so the last bend is right there at the axle. And this one I measured, I think it was four and a half inches. Yes, so four and a half inches. And I'm using a two and a half inch wheel, and that gives me a plenty of, of uh, clearance for the uh, 10 inch prop. If you're using a bigger prop, you might want to take it a little more like five inches. But uh, so four and a half inches should work. So I will measure four and a half inches down and mark it okay I'm going to transfer okay. I'm going to transfer the mark uh, around all the way around it so I can doesn't matter where it is it's at four and a half okay that's good that's four and a half, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, four and a half. This, uh, the first one I did by hand because I most, most of the time I do use just two pliers, but this 332nd wire is tough, and it's music wire, and it's, and it's solid wire, okay? So now, as you can see, that wire now needs to be bent out, okay, to form the axle. Okay, so I need to, um, if, the, if I set it in the vise like this, it needs to go out in that direction, okay. And that will form the axle. Now I'm going to turn this around and go in the opposite direction because I'm using the longer part of the of the wire here as a as the leverage to bend it. I'm going to bend it in the right direction here. Let's see. Okay, so now I'm going to bend it so that that forms 
not quite 90 degrees out for the axle. It's important to keep this part of the wire straight as you do this bend, otherwise the angle will be wrong. So that's going to sit like this, flat on the bottom of the uh, power pod, and that forms one axle. And now this one has to go in the opposite direction. where you want it and then start your bend. Okay. Good. All right, so there's my two axles. Actually, let me uh, see how it works here. What you should do is set it on the table like this and make sure it's you know, square with the table. You can not toe in or toe out at all. And uh, this one can be bent just a hair more. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's one landing gear using this handy handy little device in a bench vise. It's not even the nailed down bench vise. It's my bench vise that I, you've seen me use it from time to time. It's, it's just clamps onto the wood. And uh, the only thing I did with the bench vise, normally the bench vise has these soft jaws on it. I took the soft jaws off and used the hard jaws. So um, that's how you bend a wire. Or a landing gear. Um, now what I'll do is uh, uh, off camera I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna put the wheels on and cut this okay. Cutting it is tough I use um, uh, you have to cut it several times. Uh, tell you what I'll stop I'll be right back and uh, get set up to show you how I cut it. Be right back. Okay, I'm back, and uh, as you can see, I've got the wheels mounted now, and I have the wheel collars on each side, and I've left about a quarter inch outside the wheel collar to as a place to cut, and I've marked that with a with a uh, sharpie marker. And uh, the wheel collars do use a a size 050 um, set screw. These are Dubro 332nd wheel collars. Fortunately, the Dubro comes with a, um, a hex driver that comes with it, but it's kind of hard to use. I like the one that uh, has a nice handle on it. Okay, so one of the other things you got to look for is this wire was already cut once because it used to be 36 inches long. One side will be the finished cut, and one side is the cut you make. So that's the cut I, that was finished. I can feel, still feel a little burr on this one, and sometimes that burr will prevent you from putting the wheel collar on. Just take some emery paper. Um, if you really want to get serious, you can use a, a bench grinder and uh, grind that a little easier. I just use emery paper, and it seems to work fine. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, I got several pliers and cutters here. Using my big Lyman's pliers will do it. Uh, we'll score it enough. So I'm going to start with the Lyman's pliers and see how far I can get. 
Now we're not trying to cut it all the way through. We're just going to try to turn it and score it. Now, I've used these Lyman pliers for many, many years and done many, many cuts of wire with them, and they're pretty dull. I've got a new, nice new pair of um, channel lock cutters, and uh, probably after a couple of years of doing this, they'll be dull. You can feel it when it bites in. Okay, well, that came off, actually. Uh, lots of times I can't get it all the way through. And, um, and then you have to just take a pair of pliers and wiggle it loose. But that came all the way out. Okay. Now, let's find out how well that did. And see if a wheel collar will actually go on it. Okay, so... That cut all the way through did not leave a burr, uh, and the wheel collar will go on. And so, if you get, you know, dug in so enough, and uh, it doesn't come off, then you take two pair of pliers like this, grab either side, and just twist it, wiggle it a little bit, and it's brittle enough that that'll break. But uh, the, the brand new channel lock pliers are still pretty good. Eh, it's got a burr on it. Let me see if I can get that burr off. Yep, alright. So, um, uh, that's how you cut wire. <laughs> that's really, really tough. And uh, that's how you bend it. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.